In this chip carving lesson, you'll learn how to carve this grid into a block of basswood. We're using the materials that are provided in the Quick Start Chip Carving Kit, found at MyChipCarving.com. I made this Quick Start Kit as affordable as possible so you can give chip carving a try. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll even show you how to get free shipping. When carving in basswood, again, we're going to use the same technique I've taught you in the previous lessons. Lock your thumb into the notch on the handle. Put your thumb down on the board with one knuckle and that forms a consistent angle with your knife in relationship to the wood. Also, it's safe carving. You can't cut this hand and when you keep your free hand out of the way, there's no way you're going to get cut. The, this piece of basswood, the grain runs in this direction, up and down. You can see some light streaks. All right, You can see a little easier on the back, eh, not too much because it's a nice tight piece of basswood, but it runs in this direction. We're going to start by carving the outside lines around the grid. Notice my knuckles are hanging off the edge of this piece of wood. A perfect time to get another piece of wood and put it up alongside. I'm going to make that outside in cut all the way around the block. And we're going to remove these, again removing the with the grain chip first. The position of your board has a lot to do with carving a straight line. If you're having trouble with this, check how your board is positioned in relation to your knife and your forearm. Move the board as needed so you can pull your knife straight back and get a nice straight line. Next we'll make the with the grain cuts on one side of the line. If you watch the previous lesson that I talked about carving this grid pattern on easy board, you'll see we're following pretty much the same order of cuts. The only thing that changes is now we're dealing with with grain direction. Now we'll turn the board 90 degrees and make the cross grain cuts. I should say we'll make the first cross grain cut, just like we made the first with the grain cut. Okay, then rotate once more and we'll remove the with the grain chips with the second cut. When removing these three corner chips inside each square of the grid, we run to a little different uh, order of cuts than we did on easy board because there are areas that are weak and are uh, prone to chip out right along here and right along here. So to avoid any confusion, we will make the outside cut on all the three corner chips before you make the other two cuts. So it'll look like this. First cut and I'll make all of the first cuts around the square. And from there, we pick up where that first cut left off. 
So it's there, right around the square. And then we'll remove the chips with the final third cut. So by following that order of cuts, we don't get any chip out on the weak areas right along here. Okay, so follow that order of cuts, make the outside cuts first, and then follow up from there on every square inside this grid. After watching this video, you'll know the supplies you need and the techniques you can use to finish these square blocks that you just carved that I showed you how in the previous lessons. All right, we're gonna start with the easy board squares. Okay, these are the high density urethane. They were this tan color to begin with. The first step the first step is to spray the entire piece, whatever color you like. I really like the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover product because not only does it cover well, but there are almost an unlimited number of colors that you can choose from. All right, I selected the satin straw flower for both of these items. It took about uh, two or three coats and they dry real quickly, so it didn't take very long at all. All right, let's look at this one first. After the base coat is dried, here's one way you can add some extra color to it. I'm just gonna use an acrylic paint, and I chose the sky blue color. Have a rag handy. The thinner the better, something that you can wrap it around your finger real tightly, because that's what we're going to use to wipe off the surface. So if we just brush in inside the recesses that you carved away, and wipe off the surface, you can get some real nice looking pieces in whatever color scheme you want. So wrap the rag tightly around your finger and then just wipe off the surface, getting a new clean spot on your rag and wipe as you go. Have a little water handy to dampen the rag and that'll help remove some of the excess that gets on the surface. Here's another way you can finish your piece. And to do it, I'll be using a hard rubber roller, okay, with some acrylic paint. All right, I'm gonna spread the little bit of acrylic paint on this smooth surface, and then roll it out so I get a thin, a thin film on the rubber roller itself. Now we'll take this and we're going to roll the surface. So we're going to apply the color on the top, 
and leave the sprayed color in the recesses. And that's the reason you want this to be a hard rubber roller so that it doesn't, uh, so that the paint just stays on the surface and not down inside the recesses. This is just a metallic acrylic paint that I'm using. You can find these in the hobby store. Now depending on how dark you want it, you can let this dry and apply a second coat or if you like it that way, you can just leave it. And here's how to finish your basswood squares. The first step is to remove any leftover pattern lines. And I suggest you do that with a Tombow sand eraser. Using a sand eraser prevents any sharp ridges you carved from getting flattened off. Now in this case, we don't have any flat ridges on the carvings with these two patterns. So you can sand them off and not run into any trouble. After you've sanded off all the pattern lines, use a vacuum cleaner and vacuum off all the dust and spray on three or four coats of clear matte acrylic. Again, this is a Rust-Oleum product. It's affordable and you want clear and you also want it to be matte, not a semi-gloss or a gloss because we want a flat finish that shows off the shadows and not a uh, shiny finish that reflects the light. Okay, clear matte acrylic. I've sprayed a few coats on these pieces and you can call that good. You're done. You can leave it just like that. You've got a beautifully finished piece. If you'd like to add some color to it, here's what you can do. You can use acrylic just like we did with the easy board pieces. You can brush it on and wipe off the surface just like we were doing. Choose your colors, be as creative and colorful as you like. Or you can use a gel stain. Okay, I'm going to use this General Finishes Nutmeg Gel Stain and show you how that works. Gel stains are thicker than a regular oil-based stain and they dry on the surface. And with the surface sealed, when we apply the gel stain, we can wipe off most of the color on the surface. The better sealed the piece is, the less gel stain will adhere to the surface up on top. Okay, so I'm just going to brush this in and have a rag handy just like we did on the easy board pieces so I can wipe off the surface. So I'm not letting it puddle up down in the bottom. I'm just brushing it out. After you've done a small section, you can get ready to wipe it off. Okay, so again I've got a relatively thin cotton rag. Wrap tight around your finger and wipe off the surface. Okay, and I only sprayed I think two coats on this with the clear matte acrylic and you'll see some of the brown is sticking onto the surface. That's because I only applied two coats. If I'd applied three or four or even five coats then hardly any of that gel stain will be visible on the surface. I sprayed a couple of extra coats of matte acrylic on just this half and this half of our blocks. I'm going to show you the difference it'll make when we seal the surface even more than when I did on this side. Okay, I'm going to use the same color of acrylic and apply it just like we did before. I'll brush it in and then we'll wipe off the surface. So there you can see the difference. Seal up the surface better and none of the acrylic paint will get into the pores on the surface. Okay, this block, I had already sprayed on two coats of the matte acrylic when I applied the stain on this side. But it's clear it wasn't quite enough if I wanted to keep the background nice and white. You can see how it took on some of the gel stain as well. So I went ahead and I sprayed additional coats, I think two extra coats on this side. So this would have a total of four spray coats of matte acrylic. And let's take a look at the difference now 
when I've added more sealing to that surface. All right, again, you can see the difference when this side is sealed more completely than this side, the background won't take on any of the gel stain. Now, personal preference, I like both ways. So a little bit less sealer gives the background a little bit of a brown color, more sealer, and you've got a whiter color. There are other methods you can use to finish your carving, but these methods are quite easy, and I'm sure you'll find one that you can use to put a nice finish on these carved blocks. I hope you've enjoyed this quick start series. Hope you've learned the basics of how to get started with chip carving. And I'd invite you to visit mychipcarving.com for more lessons, courses, and patterns that you can use to keep going with your chip carving.